Hi everyone. This is a short video to introduce you to the basics of ArcGIS Online and the different account types that are used to access ArcGIS Online. ArcGIS Online is part of the Esri Geospatial Cloud. It enables you to connect people, locations, and data using interactive maps. Essentially, you can think of it as Esri's web mapping platform. In reality, you can do a lot more with ArcGIS Online than just make maps. You can, of course, make great interactive web-based maps, but you can also host GIS data and layers in the cloud. You can analyze geographic information, which is a very important part of any mapping system. And you can also share maps and GIS data. When you access ArcGIS Online, it's important to understand that anyone, even without an account, can open up the website and make a quick, easy map and search for some of the publicly available GIS data and content available on ArcGIS Online. If you want to do things like save maps, you're going to need an account. There's two types of accounts. There are public accounts and organizational accounts. And these two accounts have some pretty big differences. With a public account, you are restricted to non-commercial use. Public accounts are free, but they have limited storage as well as limited mapping capabilities. You don't get any sophisticated spatial analysis tools, and you're not able to share your information with specific groups or to keep it private. When you make a map with a public account, it's automatically available to the public. It's shared with the entire world. You also can't perform any kind of actions that require the use of credits, things like hosting feature layers. Credits cost money. They are something you have to pay for and you get a certain amount of credits when you have an organizational account and then you have to purchase more as you use them. So if you want to do more than you can do with a free public account, you need an organizational account. Organizational accounts are fee-based, they're not free, and you spend credits as you do different things in ArcGIS Online within an organizational. Organizational accounts also come with advanced mapping features. They're designed to work within a group, team, or organization with a lot of different sharing options. You can have multiple named users within an organization, meaning you can have multiple users doing different things in an organization. You can keep your data private within your organization. You can keep it private to yourself. You can share it with just a specific group or with everyone in your organization, or you can share your information with the world. You can also, also do things like host feature services, which are web services of GIS data and layers for other systems to consume. So when you license different Esri software like ArcGIS Pro or even the older ArcMap, paying for a license gives you an organizational account with a small amount of credits. Organizations that have a lot of users and use a lot of credits have higher level organizational accounts. And of course, Esri is willing to sell you as many credits and as many users within your organization as you're willing to buy. So let's give a quick look at ArcGIS Online. When you go to ArcGIS.com, you come to ArcGIS Online. If you scroll down here, you can see some different uh, options for learning about ArcGIS Online, creating maps, sharing maps, discovering patterns through analysis, and if you click ArcGIS here, 
it actually takes you to the Esri website, who makes ArcGIS, and you get a little bit more information about ArcGIS Online, and this is kind of their online help page, which is a really great resource that you should be familiar with. From here, you can learn about making maps, sharing maps and apps, how you can collaborate with the system, analyze data, and work with your data, among other things. So we use this website as a resource in a lot of the classes we have. So I'm going to go back to ArcGIS Online just by typing ArcGIS.com. And I want to show you here, even without signing in, notice I'm not signed in, that I could go on and make a map right here. And I can also search for data. So as an online mapping system, if I just click map, notice it kind of wants me to sign in there on the left. But we're going to not sign in. And let's just say I was curious about an area down here in the South Mountain State Park. Just happened to see that on the map, and so I'm going to zoom into it. And so, without even having an account or being logged in, you can use this as a great map to, to browse around and look at different areas. I can even come in here and I could change the base map to something like Open Street Map. Open Street Map will likely have some more uh, trails and information like that included on the map like these trails these trails are not part of the Esri base map we were just looking at here we could also say we wanted to look at some imagery we can browse around and explore some imagery here so without even logging in we can do a good bit of exploration using this online map now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to ArcGIS.com, and that what doesn't take me there, so I'll just type ArcGIS back in the, the browser there. And I want to show you how you can even search for content without being logged in. So here I am in the search window, and I'm just going to type Asheville. And this shows us a bunch of information from Asheville, North Carolina. I'm going to scroll around and look at some, and I, there's a lot of content available. You can see who created the content, what kind of content it is, whether it's a web map, a web, a, a map image layer, or something like a feature layer. We'll talk about these different types of content in an upcoming video. But you can see all of these different item types under the content group here. And know when you're searching ArcGIS online, you can filter by things like layers. You can also filter by the date modified, status, things like that. And so what I'm going to do here is go down and find a layer that I want to add to the map or to a map. And here's an Asheville neighborhoods. I'm curious about the Asheville neighborhood. So if I click on the name of this map image layer here, it's going to take me to its item description page. All items have a thumbnail. The thumbnails are automatically generated. Oftentimes you want to create one that looks better than, than this particular one. And uh, the items have descriptions, tags that allow it to be searched. And I'm just going to go on and open this in a map viewer. And when I click that, you'll see that it's kind of remembering my old map. It's remembering my old base layer. So I'm going to change this base layer to, say, Esri Streets. And you can see the Asheville neighborhoods now. I just added those neighborhoods to the map. And if I click the Content button here, you'll see the Asheville neighborhoods. So I can select a neighborhood and see that that's Hall Creek. This data has attribute values that are associated with the polygons on the map. And you could look at the attribute table here as well. You can see there's 71 features. So there's 71 neighborhoods or polygons 
in this particular uh, information found on ArcGIS online. So I could even add other data to this map if I wanted to go to modify the map. I could add more data here and I'm going to search for layers. I could also add a layer from a file or some other layer from the web that is not stored on ArcGIS online. But I'll just search for layers here and let's just say Asheville Parks and see what comes up. And sure enough, here are some parks in Asheville. And if I just click this plus sign, it's going to add them right to the map. And so now you can see, I can scroll in and pan around, and you can see here that that's the Richmond Hill Park. And it's actually got the um, little neighborhood right by it that's not actually part of the, the neighborhood's layer. But let's say you were curious how far uh, Montford was from there. Well, without even being logged in, I could do a quick measurement using this measure tool and measure from the center of Montford over here to the center of the park. It's about 1.8 miles. So it's pretty close. Um, so you can do that without even signing in or using a public account. If you wanted to save this map, you would need to sign in. Now I'm going to sign in with my organizational account and I'll talk a little bit about the differences between an organizational account and a public account while I demonstrate some of these uh, concepts and some of the functionality in ArcGIS.com. So I'm going to give this a title, uh, Demo Map 2, and I'm going to Give it some tags so it can be searched. AB Tech, uh, let's say Asheville. Now, the tags you give it and the description you give allow it to be searched by other people. This is a demo map for my GIS classes. Now, in ArcGIS Online, you can organize your content into folders much the way you organize your files on your computer in folders. I don't have a folder built for this particular demo, so I'll just drop it in my highest level uh, home folder you can think of it as, and you've got a, a folder name the same as your username to, to access ArcGIS online. So I'll save this map, and logging in, it saves my map, and it brings me into my organization. If you look into the, or, the URL there, I'm now at abtech.maps.arcgis.com. And I could save the map. I already saved it. Um, and I'm going to go to the Home tab. And I could look at the gallery of things I have. Go to 3D Scenes, Notebook. I could look at my groups, my content, and my whole organization. So I'll just go to the Home tab here, and it takes me to my organizational home. If you're using a public account, you won't see an organizational home page. If you are within our organization but not the administrator, you won't see the organization tab. I have an organization tab because I'm the administrator. But from here, I wanted to show you my content. So I have a lot of folders over here where I store different content for things like an editing and topology uh, exercise I wrote, a cycling infrastructure map I made, there's some coronavirus folders, there's a bike packing folder that's got some information for a bike packing map I was working on. So this is my content. Within the organization there are other users who have their own content. My content, I could make private where no one could see it. I could share it with, an in, with a group within my organization where just the users, the, the, the ArcGIS Online users in that group within my organization could see the content. I could share it with my entire organization or I could share it with the entire world. Here are my groups. I've got a lot of groups based on courses, 
here's a, a course group for uh, a CEG class this semester and here's the content in that course in that group I could also go over here to my organization and as the administrator of this organization I can look at everything every user's done in the whole organization so I can go to organization and learn a lot more about what other users in my organization are doing and I can even go to organization here and and learn about the credits that are being spent I can look at the members of my organization which there are a lot of them their roles the kind of the kind of capabilities they have um, and the light software licenses that I can give them through ArcGIS online so that's a, a short introduction into the basics of ArcGIS online we use ArcGIS online in a lot of our classes to introduce basic GIS concepts we do it especially in the introductory to GIS courses because it provides a very low barrier of entry for students to, to get their hands on GIS software. There's no need to download GIS software. There's no need to install it. You don't have to have a powerful computer. It is all web-based and so it's a great way to introduce basic GIS concepts and skills to students and you'll be seeing it in our classes.